Before I got into this series, I didn't even know what a cluster headache was. But it's something that's uh, bandied around an awful lot by people making a case for antinatalism. Um, the case being that there are certain types of pain, certain types of agony, that are simply unendurable and beyond the ability of human beings to cope with. I don't disagree. I'm fully aware of that. Um, one of the interesting aspects of that is, though, they say that the best thing to do in their philosophy is to cease to breed, therefore we cease to produce more suffering human beings. But the problem is, to a certain mindset, I call them the morbid antinatalists, um, <clears throat> the logic uh, takes on, the logic of this um, antinatalist position, i.e. no people, no suffering, takes on a perverse sort of quality. Um, anyone who's ever suffered from depression will agree that it's pretty much impossible to get the point across to other people just how hellish it is. To someone actually suffering from a busted leg or a severe burn or, yes, your infamous cluster headache, it's pretty obvious, even to an outsider, when you look at this person, what kind of pain they're in. It's ghastly and the person is writhing in agony and in extremis, obviously in extremis. That's not the case with the depressive. The depressive is in just as much pain, I presume, as a cluster headache patient is. Patient is I don't. I've never had one, so I have no point of comparison. But there are no symptoms, at least visible. The person in extreme physical pain is writhing around, screaming, um, that sort of thing, um, red face. Whereas the depressive is just. And it's hard to compare the two. But the interesting thing is that the depressive knows this. And the depressive who seeks to make sense of their illness through a depressive philosophy such as antinatalism is committing an act which can only possibly be uh, termed a fatal error. The uh, hijacked intelligence, the intelligence that's been overwhelmed by the apparent reality, reality of the mood, is trying to cope with it by simply accepting its inevitability. Now the problem with that is, what's that is what that is essentially doing is opening the floodgates to a torrent of unmitigated, um, completely concentrated suffering, the distilled essence of agony, saying that this is inevitable and I might as well just accept it as it flows all over me and through me and destroys me. Now that's an interesting way to cope with the pain of the world, is to completely stop resisting it. Um, or not even resisting it, but attempting to deal with it, to attempting to overcome it. My favorite line to describe the agony of depression again comes from my friend Styron here, and it's it's a quick one. It says um, when this is how he reached at his uh, how rather how he came to his crisis after dinner, sitting in the living room, I experienced a curious inner convulsion that I can only describe as despair beyond despair. It came out of the cold night. I did not think such anguish possible. He'd been suffering from depression for quite some time, but he had no idea just how unendurable it was going to get. The human imagination tends to get overwhelmed at certain periods of uh, its functioning, and I think that severe depression is one of them. One of the strange and paradoxical things about depression is if you're the sort of person where depression comes and goes, when you're in your normal state and you're not depressed, you forget all about what it was ever like. <laughs> Dreadful business, but uh, that's what happens. That's just the way the human, I suppose, psyche works. It's a defense mechanism. There's no redeeming qualities to depression, so you just blot it out of your mind. Whether you want to or not, that's what happens. 
this, of course, lets you um, sets you up perfectly to get ambushed by it the next time it comes because you haven't spent your up period in preparing for the next attack. Learning to do that is, to me, the first step on the road to recovery. Remember, it'll come back. <laughs> but, you know, next time you'll be ready, if you're careful. So again, um, I don't understand this idea that the best way to cope with pain to the morbid antinatalist is to get into a philosophy that switches the emphasis from external to internal pain and places a certain degree of reality on it. It's not just that the depressive pain is real. To the depressive antinatalist, the pain is reality. You see why I call depression madness. Because that's the kind of thinking it can drive you to. Thank you.